Yeah, please go on. So, so I started my professional career as a business analyst mm -hmm. and have been working for the past five years. And proficient in environment as the environment information to integrate the diagrams such as symbols and symbols. Apart from that, I have worked in working various SDLC technologies like what we call Agile. And due to this, I gained enough knowledge of different project that are out there in the market. Mm -hmm. Apart from that, uh, my main, main responsibility in the business analyst is to communicate with my engineering team about the requirements and uh, act, act as a point of contact for my development team regarding any question of uh, on business or Okay, can you describe me your current project? I mean, what was the project all about? What are the processes that you have handled in that particular project? Sure. So uh, my current project is with QC. It is a it is a multinational uh, multinational tele shopping and uh, e commerce company. Okay. Uh, and the project is uh, we are developing a uh, order tracking system. For their website, uh, so that uh, the customer can uh, so so that customer can uh, uh, track their uh, package in the real time. So as a business analyst, uh, uh, I start I started uh, this project in uh, in the initial phase and worked with my project manager more closely in the need of the project. For that, we have done uh, the SWOT analysis, and uh, after the detailed analysis, I started interacted with the uh, various stakeholder and business users in order to uh, elicit and gather the requirement uh, using various elaboration sessions like uh, brainstorming, uh, interviewing technique, and uh, focus, focus group session. And after getting those requirements, I documented it using DRDs and RDs. Okay. So, what are the typical uh, contents in a BRD? So, uh, basically, uh, I use the complete uh, company's uh, template that are uh, available over there, mm -hmm. uh, which includes executive summary, mm -hmm. uh, scope of the project, right? Problem that is related to the project, right? Uh, uh, the business benefits, right? Business benefit, product, um, project cost, and uh, assumptions related to it, and uh, 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 some issues uh, that are related uh, to the project. Uh, after that, uh, uh, we have uh, business. Uh, Benefits, cost, as assumption, right. and uh, also the risk uh, uh, management plan is included in the, in the BRD, which includes uh, risk, uh, risk assessment, risk response, and benefit utilization. Perfect. And at the end, we have conclusion and recommendation. Perfect. Now, when you perform the SWOT analysis for your project, what are the typical threats you observe for your project? So uh, basically, the threat uh, that we have uh, and uh, observed in short analysis is that uh, there are other uh, companies, uh, other e-commerce companies, which are uh, currently uh, have the tracking system in their uh, website. So let's say the Amazon have full plus tracking system in their uh, site. They can even uh, tell where is the driver right now. Mm -hmm. So that was the ma main threat. Uh, to our uh, product, okay. but uh, the same thing. The QVC works in a different way as you know. The model is like uh, the model is e-commerce, e -commerce, but uh, the working functional functionality is different. Okay. So, yeah. Certain. 
Now there goes the second question. So basically, uh, in requirement illustration phase, the requirements are always unconformed. We are not uh, sure about the requirements or the state from the like what are the requirements uh, uh, say. Uh, so we do the requirement illustration session so that to get those uh, requirement clear and in a conformed phase. And in requirement judgment phase, we have the requirements in. Uh, Conformed phase and uh, yeah, conformed and documented phase. So I think that's that's the major difference between. Yes, perfect. So the product, uh, basically product backlog is the place where all the user stories or all the requirements or we can say all the features are uh, there mm -hmm. uh, re regarding, to the, uh, regarding to the product. And uh, release uh, backlog is a subset of uh, product backlog. Mm -hmm. uh, so we do the planning and uh, uh, planning on it. Uh, in, uh, in we do the planning in spring uh, planning meeting so to decide uh, which uh, uh, user stories or which features is gonna release in next uh, sprint and the sprint backlog in sync uh, and the spring uh, backlog may be the, uh, the tasks that are uh, remain uh, in the like that the tasks that are unfinished in the in the running uh, in the completed sprint and that that is known as sprint backlog. Uh, few correction over here. Product backlog is the main backlog wherein you would be having all your requirements, your issues, your defects, or your change request, everything. Now the subset of product backlog is your release backlog. Now release uh, backlog itself would span multiple sprint backlog because one release would comprise of two three sprint cycles or Two, three sprint backlog so whenever there are unfinished tasks in a sprint backlog that would go again back to the product backlog from where it would again be picked up in the next sprint cycle So, uh, data flow diagram represents uh, the flow of data uh, uh, between the components of, of a system. Uh, and uh, uh, sequence diagram uh, also uh, represents the same but in a sequen sequential manner. So that, so I think that's the main difference between them. Yes, absolutely. And, so, what happens essentially is in data flow diagram, you could read it from any part so let's say we have a data flow diagram we can read it from any part but for a sequence diagram we have a sequential method to follow in order to understand the flow of the sequence in that particular diagram so that's the major difference
so a stakeholder communication plan uh, basically uh, is a uh, a plan to how to interact with the uh, with the various stakeholders uh, with using uh, and how uh, which uh, technique should be should a business analyst use a uh, use uh, to get the requirements from the stakeholders I didn't get it. Can you please come again? So, uh, basically, it is a plan to uh, uh, to know how to. Okay, so it is essentially a template which we create for various stakeholders in our project who are geographically distributed so we need to understand how to communicate with them so in order to understand and develop a plan we create a stakeholders communication plan wherein we highlight all the list of stakeholders where they are located and what is their preferred mode of communication via email or via phone call or via jira if you are using any requirements management tool for that matter So, uh, so let's say we got a requirement uh, and we documented. But uh, if the if uh, some business user or stakeholder uh, demanded any change in the requirements, then we do the uh, we make another version of that requirement. Okay, and how do you achieve it in a particular system? Let's say we are using Jira. So I didn't get the question. I mean, how do you version this uh, requirement in a particular system in real practice? What you would do to version a requirement? I'll update the requirement that is previous uh, you would never update it so how no, not sure. so how you would version it is like you would create a new requirement and you would link the old requirement with the new requirement okay so you would establish a traceability so if right. someone would like to trace the requirement from source how the requirement originated he can go through the different different versions of the requirement which has uh, which the requirement has gone through so far So a component of use case diagram uh, are actor boundary, mm -hmm. uh, the relationships, mm -hmm. and uh, there is one more thing. Okay, and what the about system? the other one? If we would like to write a use case in a textual format, uh, in textual. the use case name, the use case description, the basic flow, the alternate flow, the, the exception, 
precondition and post condition. user requirements can be like under uh, defined by <clears throat> what our user expects in in his pro in his or her product or what features uh, they want to involve include in the in the product mm -hmm. that is user requirements okay once uh, those requirements are uh, like uh, gathered then it it can be documented uh, using various documents like PID. Okay. Yeah. Then how is it different from business requirement? Basically, uh, not sure. Okay, so what happens essentially is, let's say you are working in a particular domain, insurance domain. So there would be a set of requirements which are core to the business. For example, creating a quotation, or issuing a policy, or renewing a policy. These are core business requirements. This is how business works. So there won't be any alteration or modification to the business requirement. So often what people get themselves confused is like business requirement is user requirement because it is coming from the business stakeholder. But it is a myth. It is not like that. Business requirement are core to business requirement. But user requirement are something that is additionally added to the system by the user. For example, an underwriter would say I would have a functionality to review each of the policy which has been referred to me and I should be able to handle each of these policies and make a decision on accepting it, rejecting it or declining it for whatsoever matters. And he would say, I want this option on the fourth page at the bottom of the screen. So this is something, a user specific requirement coming from an underwriter. So this is how it differs from business requirement. So, uh, in Agile uh, methodology uh, contract, the scope creep uh, is uh, basically welcoming the change in requirements or uh, in the late uh, phase of the project. Yeah. No. So, what happens essentially is like whenever we create any high level documentation we tend to finalize the scope the in scope item and the out of scope item so in scope item is something that we are going to deliver to the customer and out of scope item are something that we are not supposed to handle or we are not uh, supposed to um, accept those now what happens essentially is like business users they would try to creep the scope they would try to bring in more out of scope item within in scope item so you have to manage that scope creeping so that particular term is called as scope creep when 
out of scope items are bought into in scope item So uh, basically data analysis refers to uh, uh, the process of uh, inspecting, cleaning, and uh, 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 by cleaning and uh, modeling the data to uh, find any pattern or a, to find a, any pattern in the data to answer the unsolved question. As a business analyst, uh, uh, we can use data analysis uh, to, I think, may, uh, make different reports regarding to the business life. Okay. So essentially, it's the process of um, inspecting the data, analyzing the data, thereon cleaning, transforming, and modeling the data as per our needs and requirements. Okay, so that's all for you. Who wants to come next? Berlin? Uh, Sunil, can I go? Yeah, please. Shitej, right? Can you hear me? Yeah, Shitej, I can hear you. Yes. Okay, so the first question is same for you. Okay. Uh, so I've been working as business analyst from past six years. Mm -hmm. uh, for in uh, business requirement gathering, developing web based applications, uh, software solutions, mobile based applications. And I've been working uh, in all the phases of software development lifecycle, uh, achieving different milestones mm -hmm. uh, uh, in Agile. And, and I've been also working in the waterfall model. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I have worked in multiple domains uh, as a business analyst that includes insurance, e commerce, healthcare. Mm -hmm. um, uh, while working as business analyst, I have very close relations with uh, professional close uh, relations with my user stakeholders, uh, project manager, and the development team. Mm -hmm. And I have good expertise in um, uh, carrying out uh, JAD sessions and focus group sessions uh, uh, to elicit and uh, gather the requirements. Okay. Can you describe me one of your uh, uh, the recent projects that you have worked, what was the process in that particular project? How you handled that project? Yeah, sure. So my recent project is with Travelers Insurance. Uh, Travelers Insurance is one of the largest insurance company in the United States. Mm -hmm. uh, we deal in domestic property, casualty insurance, and auto insurance. Mm -hmm. So working at this uh, uh, in Travelers Insurance, the scope of the project was to enhance the uh, mobile application functionality of the current mobile application that has already been built in the past. So using this application, the customers can uh, uh, create insurance and make payment and customize what kind of insurance they want. And uh, at the end, they can purchase the insurance port. So uh, while working in this project, I uh, started. Uh, I started to work from the initial phase. Mm -hmm. So in the initial phase, I first uh, 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 got to understand. I first understood what is the scope and need of the project. What is the business case all about? Uh, what are the uh, objectives that uh, uh, the business wants to achieve from this project? So uh, at this uh, initial stage, I first built the uh, uh, stakeholders communication plan, like uh, what are their preferred uh, way of communication through the RACI matrix. Mm -hmm. Then um, I started uh, eliciting the requirements uh, uh, in which uh, I captured and draw the requirements by interviewing, brainstorming, and carrying out fo focus group sessions with users and stakeholders. Then uh, I, dis I discussed those uh, requirements with the development uh, team, analyzed those requirements, 
and uh, gathered more detail what uh, what needs to be what what I should uh, ask as a business analyst to the users and stakeholders to break down those requirements. Then after I went back to uh, stay, stakeholders to gather requirements in detail, and then I documented those requirements, created prototypes and wireframes, uh, how the uh, mobile application page would look like after the uh, product has been developed. Uh, then uh, after the requirements were confirmed, I created user stories, features, and epics to uh, make it uh, uh, testable and small for the developers to develop the product. Then I, in the executing phase, uh, I walked through the requirements with the development team and clarified their doubts. And uh, I worked closely with the product uh, project manager to manage the product backlog in Jira. Mm -hmm. And then uh, in the sprint life cycle, uh, I conducted daily scrum meetings to track how the uh, project work is going on. Is uh, are there any issues uh, developers facing? And uh, uh, at the end of the sprint, I carried. Um, uh, we had a sprint review session and a, a sprint ret a retrospective session to know uh, to understand what has been, uh, you know, what can be changed in the upcoming sprint to you know, achieve milestones in a much productive manner. And then I was also uh, closely involved with the testing team to uh, uh, ensure that the requirements which has been gathered is, uh, you know, uh, is being into, uh, is being converted into the, uh, is being tested properly in the uh, user ac acceptance testing phase. And uh, after that, after the requirements have been uh, tested, I uh, gained approvals from the, my users and stakeholders that uh, okay, these uh, these were the requirements, and uh, this part of requirements have been delivered in a concise and concrete manner. Okay, fair enough. So, since you have worked in an insurance project, may I know what is circulars in insurance? Uh, what uh, can you repeat? Uh, I'm asking, what do you understand by circulars in insurance? Uh, circulars. Uh, I think circulars are you give a vital, you give detailed information on uh, how the insurance should be developed. I'm not sure about that. <laughs> no, it's not like that. See, so circular is like uh, whenever you are defining the rates for a particular insurance. For example, you define the rate for an auto insurance. Let us consider an example of travelers insurance itself. So let's say they have been offering insurance for a state like Texas. Now, in that particular state, they have been offering insurance from last 10 years. Now, within that 10 years, whatever the rates are there, the rates keep on changing. Now, they won't be changing very frequently. For example, every month they won't be changing. They would be changing. Uh, let's say in a frequency of uh, 16 months or 18 months. So these changes comes in the form of circulars. So these circulars are issued by your state who approves your insurance policy document. So once the circular are approved and uh, they have been finalized, they are circulated to different insurance company so that the necessary rates can be incorporated in the uh, system itself. So whoever is the insurance provider, whether it's Allstate, Travelers, or um, whether it's uh, your Penn Insurance or any XYZ insurance company, they have to comply with those circulars issued by the state department. Anyways. Okay. Next comes your question number two. Uh, hello. Yeah. So, the definition of done in agile, uh, I guess, is uh, 
uh, in the scrum team the acceptance criteria that uh, i mean there will be uh, n number of user stories and uh, their uh, associated uh, acceptance criteria which uh, which is delivered in a particular at the sprint so the done means that the quality of the work and uh, that has been completed in that particular uh, sprint and uh, yeah it's it's actually used to assess uh, whether the user story has been completed or not okay and, who and is... the uh, yeah yeah go on yeah, I was going for the uh, part of the patient who is accountable for it. So, the accountability is uh, uh, for business analysts. He uh, he has to ensure that the uh, all the user stories which has been assigned in the particular sprint uh, sprint backlog should be completed on time. Uh, he should make sure that uh, his development team uh, is working on those uh, user stories and if they need any help uh, they uh, he is the accountable person as the business scientist he can create use case diagrams or the process flow diagrams to explain how the user stories should be done a few corrections over here definition yeah. of done is essentially a checklist which is which is derived out of your acceptance criteria which are written primarily by a business analyst so acceptance criteria okay. is always an accountability of a business analyst and definition of done is always an accountability of the development team, not a B. Okay. Uh, requirement traceability matrix. Uh, so, uh, requirement tra traceability matrix is uh, uh, is a kind of uh, tool that helps to ensure that the uh, the requirements, the project scope, are delivered, uh, and uh, uh, it actually captures the. Uh, uh, client's uh, development i mean the proposed by, uh, whatever has been proposed by the client and uh, in a single document uh, that should be delivered uh, at the uh, you know uh, conclusion phase of the life cycle uh, at the uh, end phase of the life cycle in a uh, well a properly documented manner okay i mean uh, basically it is a document that uh, uh, that will map and uh, trace all the uh, requir requirements uh, with uh, different, uh, you can say, test cases that can be used in UAT testing. Okay. So, essentially, you can consider it as a single repository wherein all the requirements or all the artifacts would be linked with each other. For example, all the user stories would be available in the requirement traceability matrix linked to the appropriate test cases, the task for the development team, whatever the UML use cases or data dictionary or XYZ documents you prepare, they all would be linked in this requirement traceability matrix. So if you go by a system, so Jira or TFS has this functionality wherein you could trace the requirement and create a system specific virtual requirement traceability matrix. But if you want, you can create your own excel sheet as well manually for creating a requirement traceability matrix as well sorry Uh, so the BA communication package uh, includes uh, uh, details on how the uh, business analyst is going to communicate with the uh, stakeholders, users, and uh, how he's gonna, uh, you know, who who are the uh, 
development team, what are they working on, uh, who is the project manager, uh, how to communicate with them, and what's need to be you know delivered uh, uh, in terms of project deliverables. Hello. Oh, okay. So essentially, what is BA communication package is like whenever you are working as a business analyst, you create lots of documentation. Now you cannot share everything with every stakeholder. So what you do, you categorize the stakeholder basis on their interest. For example, a business case won't be of that much relevant for a development team. So what development team would be needing? They would be needing the user stories. They would be needing the UML use cases. Whereas, if you consider the same case with a business stakeholder, they may not be interested in this UML use cases. They would be needing a high level documentation like BRT or a business case or a proposal plan, these kind of documents. So you have to first identify a stakeholder, whoever are present in your project. Then you have to group them based on their interest. And then you have to decide the package like what you need to share with whom which group of stakeholder because you cannot share everything with everyone okay Sorry, it should be extended. Uh, hello? Yeah. Uh, so, uh, U UMLs are, uh, uh, they are the general uh, modeling language that describes how the system and the object uh, in it behaves. And the, uh, uh, include and exclude uh, are the relationships mm -hmm. uh, in UML diagrams. Uh, for example, if we consider include, include is a relationship which is used to identify uh, relationships between use cases. Uh, and uh, it actually it is uh, used specifically to reduce the level of duplication uh, duplication functionality by you know factoring out the common behavior. And uh, extend relationship is uh, used to uh, show uh, special or exceptional cases for a uh, for a use case. Uh, let's take an example of uh, uh, for the include relationship. Let's take example as a login function is a good example of uh, include relationship. And for uh, extend relationship, uh, uh, for example. Uh, let's say uh, uh, approval may be required for some kind of order to be confirmed, uh, maybe 10,000 rupees or I mean, whatever number uh, that could be example for extend relationship. Okay. Uh, so change driven approach is uh, uh, we can say agile, agile methodology where the uh, uh, change requests are possible uh, as we know agile is very flexible in nature uh, mm -hmm. the requirements are encouraged uh, to be uh, you know it can change over time as for the needs of the stakeholders uh, and users uh, and on the other hand the plan driven approach uh, 
is uh, a waterfall method where the where the requirements don't change over time. Uh, after the requirements have been gathered, they directly go into the uh, development phase, and the product has been and it can uh, the change is only possible when the uh, Require product has been delivered completely at the end of the pro uh, project. Okay. So, what are the other names for plan driven approach and change driven approach? Uh, other names as in? How do uh, you, you mean the other names like waterfall and agile? There is one more name that is used for this. Uh, other name predictive and adaptive oh uh, yeah predictive and adaptive yeah i forgot the predictive name for the word uh so trans Transaction can be considered as a uh, single amount of work. Uh, for example, let's say if a transaction has been successful, then the uh, whatever the modif uh, data modification that has been made during that uh, transactions uh, and has been uh, will become a permanent part of the database okay. and. And so let's take another example. If the there is an error occurring uh, during a transaction, and it should be cancelled, so there is a requirement of rollback so that the error can be you know solved, and all the data modifications can be erased. So, a uh, candidate key is uh, uh, can be called as a unique key in database that can be any column or maybe uh, some combination of columns uh, that actually sorry that actually qualifies as a unique key okay. uh, and uh, candidate key can uh, in a particular table there can be more than one candidate key mm -hmm. and uh, uh, a candidate key, I mean, one of, um, if there are more than one uh, candidate key, uh, a candidate key can, you know, can be qualified as primary key as well. I mean, at, after uh, it becomes, I mean, depending on the requirement, it becomes the primary key. Hmm, but uh, primary key applies for one specific column. Now, candidate key, since it's a combination of multiple columns, I don't think it should be eligible for a primary key. A candidate key is, I mean, in a particular table uh, or database, a candidate key, you know, uh, can be com is a combination of columns that uh, actually qualifies as the unique key. Yes, uh, it is a database. unique key. The nature of this column is uniqueness, and we identify multiple such columns which can potentially become a primary key at a later point of time. So, candidate key essentially, um, what I would say, uh, defines who are the possible contender uh, column in a particular table to become a primary key. Uh, okay. So, a uh, data dictionary, uh, uh, we can consider it as a, a metadata repository and which, uh, you know, contains the detailed information, uh, detailed contents and, you know, information of the structure of a database and the uh, uh, different relation, I mean, the type of relationships between its uh, uh, elements, uh, you know, like, detailed information on the database and the type of you know relationship between those elements 
ओके uh so swim lanes are a uh, 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 generalized concept that are used in uh, process modeling uh process modeling uh, which adds an you know extra level of clarity about uh the you know process flows in a flow chart diagram and uh, it you know it uh, groups the responsibilities of actors in a process and uh, it shows how the uh, you know process flows so let's take an example of uh, uh, example of uh, uh, there are people like customer sales and stock room mm -hmm. so for example, when a customer uh, requests for some service and pays for that uh, service, mm -hmm. uh, then it will go, the process flow will go like customer is requesting for service and then he pays. Mm -hmm. And on the uh, next side, there will be sales, where the sales takes the order and uh, delivers the order. And when the stock, in the stock room, there will be, after it order has been taken, the uh, order has been filled and been delivered uh, from the sales department and then at the end coming back to the customer the customer collects the order so it completes the uh, flow diagram how the swim lane flows from one uh, one point to another okay so swim lanes are essentially lanes which are created in business process modeling so this lanes can be categorized based on department based on the activities or based on the users so the significance of swim lanes would be like if you consider a activity or a particular person or a particular department so whatever tasks that are happening or whatever transitions that are happening within the uh, business process itself that could be represented within that particular lane itself so that it goes easier for representation and for comprehension to the business stakeholder that okay let's say if we consider an insurance domain agents accountability is this many thing underwriters accountability is this many thing your uh, uh, what i would say policy administration systems accountability is this many thing so that gives an easy representation of what is happening and what is under whose control so that is why we use quickly okay, okay fair enough uh, now, Sadeen, I have a question. Yeah. So, uh, considering we have like uh, five, six, five, six years of experience, mm -hmm. uh, we won't be getting direct questions, right? Like, what is RTM? What is VA communication plan or package? Mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. Or, uh, like, I, I wanted to ask you, like. Okay. Yes, you won't be getting, uh, it would be a mixed portfolio. To be very honest you would be getting direct question as well as you would be getting scenario based questions as well so towards the end i would cover some of the scenario based questions uh, let me assess everyone at least on the basic standards then i would come to the scenario based question okay thank you Sunil. yeah now who wants to go next i'll go next can i go next shivani uh shivani yeah shivani so the first question comes to you. It's the same question.
Yes. the challenging part you faced uh, when you were working as an analyst in this project what was the most challenging thing that you handled so far yeah there were many challenges which i handled the basic the main challenge was to communicate with the different type of stakeholders understanding their requirements and uh, coping up to their requirements then there was communication where was uh, not getting the requirements in the proper uh, way. So, uh, understanding the basic requirements of the stakeholders and communicating the uh, technical, uh, the technical problem to the technical team was a main challenge for me. Okay, then. Uh, invest in agile is basically as the name suggests it is independent negotiable valuable estimate estimable smoke and test driven so basically independent is uh, all the uh, all the test scenarios and all the stuff should be independent negotiable uh, that is uh, the, the Negotiable is the only thing that is fixed, and uh, we have to in an agile project. We can always, uh, as we know, agile pro in agile development methodology is basically change in request. So, uh, coping to the changes and getting negotiable to it is the basic task. Valuable is, uh, uh, it should be a uh, de deliverable value is uh, should be deliverable to the stakeholder. Estimable is whatever uh, whatever user stories or whatever tasks are to be done. Are to be estimated in a uh, in a in a business requirement way. Uh, small whatever tasks are given, they should be small and concise and divided into uh, testable. Uh, whatever the product we are creating, that should be uh, uh, testable, is validated to each and every test scenario. Okay. So, what do invest relate to? Does it relate to requirements attributes or requirement properties? Uh, it, I guess it relates to requirement properties. Yes, absolutely. So uh, basically, functional decomposition is the uh, basically we take a complex uh, pro 
problems and uh, dividing those uh, complex problems, complex uh, issue into smaller uh, parts is basically functional decomposition. Yeah. <clears throat> so, yeah, please go on. Should I explain it with an example? Yeah, please. Yeah, if uh, suppose the uh, yes, login system. So, uh, so if we have to log into an ATM, so that the, the this basic pro this basic issue is divided into smaller chunks. Uh, so go to the ATM, insert the uh, insert the pin, uh, insert the ATM card, insert the pin. Which, so all these scenarios are divided into basic different chunks. That is basically what. Yes. Back analysis is uh, back analysis is ensured that whatever actual requirement is met actually does not affect uh, this does not affect or does not uh, change the project to any risk or any other related uh, risk assessment. So uh, basically, what my task was to uh, whether in in the impact analysis I ensured that whatever requirements we have captured that doesn't affect the project. Uh, uh, in, in a future reference uh, so uh, i made sure that whatever use cases or whatever uh, you know diagrams i made or whatever user stories i help uh, i help uh, i take it i took into consideration that that doesn't lead my project to any risk assessment okay can you explain me five wire technique and impact analysis i didn't get the question uh, can you explain me five why techniques in impact analysis? Oh, no. uh, I don't know the answer. Sorry. Okay, so when we conduct impact analysis. So there is a series of questions that we go through. Like for example, there is a error in particular page. Now, why that error occurred in that particular page? What's the root cause of it? We do a kind of root cause analysis before concluding around what is the impact of that particular system. So we tend to ask as many questions as possible and these questions are in the form of why. So every why would uncover the hidden aspect of what is the next area of root cause analysis then the next why then the next why so this is not essentially five why it can extend up to seven or nine why until and unless you find the root cause from where this particular error occurred in the system it could be a qa miss it could be a developer miss it could be a ba miss in terms of capturing that particular requirement or it could be a miss from the business user side that they haven't given that particular requirement so this way you tend to identify by asking why's or questions to different different stakeholders and create your impact analysis report okay okay i got it. thank you whatever how big is a project and according to the project what type of manual workforce we would require uh, to complete the project is basically uh, the, the, pro the production capacity needed by an organization to meet the demand is basically capacity planning and impact methodology mm -hmm. production capacity needed by the organization or the project or by the project So it essentially capturing the number of hours of bandwidth of the scrum team within a particular project. Yeah.
the basic open group session is uh, what if there is a complex issue which we which is occurred in the uh, in the sprint or in the project so uh, sticking to that point and then do, uh, do, doing uh, discussing that problem or discussing that issue with the, uh, the particular team which is related to it it is basically focus group session uh, and uh, we in, in focus group session session we basically improve the existing ideas uh, and in brainstorming session the main difference is uh, team team basically ask more questions and generate new ideas uh, from it so uh, th that is the main difference between brainstorming session and focus group session and what about the users who are invited to attend this session are there any differentiation between them in the focus group session whatever the whatever the issue is so re related to those uh, related to that problem the uh, focus group session is uh, has people regarding to it in brainstorming session basically uh, whoever is the uh, stakeholder uh, suppose we have to uh, uh, get required to requirement analysis or requirement gathering so related to that domain uh, we do brain we do brainstorming sessions to that particular people Yes, Oh, uh, process modeling is basically business process modeling. In, uh, it is the activity basically uh, or the stages in which all the processes are done. And uh, uh, it is a particular, I can say, it is a process uh, by which we can describe our project, how we are modeling it. Okay. And what do you understand by process re-engineering? Process re-engineering. Uh, suppose in a in a scenario where uh, there is a complex complex task and we uh, there's a change in requirement and we have to cope up uh, the whole uh, whole system uh, with the change in requirement. So we need to uh, we need to do the analysis and in. Uh, uh, redesigning of the system so that is basically proce uh, process re-engineering and how often uh, does it happen in a particular project context in a in an agile methodology uh, it may happen two to three times based on the client what they exactly want no See, it what happens on project to project, I guess. No. So, what happens essentially is uh, business process modeling is a special branch in business analysis wherein you deal with the different workflows associated to a particular system. Now, once your workflow is designed, it cannot be changed very frequently because ultimately it would shake the entire system. So, business process re engineering is like you have to identify the flaw in the existing system once let's say in every two years and you go about fixing those processes flaws in that particular system so it doesn't happen very often business process re-engineering happens once in every two year or three year for a given project
uh, yeah uh, Moscow pri- technique is basically a prioritization technique which we use for uh, product uh, product backlog uh, so basically uh, Moscow is must have requirement uh, should have uh, 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 all the requirements could have uh, and would be so basically uh, in the uh, in the sprint uh, as it is an agile methodology each and every uh, task is divided into sprints so uh, we use a uh, mosco technique to prioritize the uh, sprint backlogs so what, uh, for suppose there is a user story in which there are features so which is the feature which is on top priority which is to be done at at at, at immediate uh, response so we put that user story in, in the must have category uh, whatever is uh, whatever is required for the project but it is ha- it is having less priority and it should be it is and it is critical for the system to be included so that goes in the should be category should be category is are the additional features which are required uh, and uh, and they, basically they are the user requirements uh, which we get so that can be done at a later phase in the project which are not so important goes into the should be category and the won't category is basically the the uh, the, the requirement which which are not to be uh, taken to the project so by using this uh, all uh, concept we uh, categorize the sprint uh, in backlog and prioritize them and the sprint is accordingly Uh, sprint zero is the basic initial sprint. And what all activities are performed in the sprint zero? Uh, in sprint zero, uh, basically, uh, whatever the basic basic requirements which we have taken, uh, which are supposed to be completed at the initial phase, are uh, are initiated in sprint zero. For example. Uh, for example, if it is a logging system. Uh, what are the login credential, the username, and uh, the password? These are these are the uh, in a login system. These are the basic functionalities which are to be done. So they, these responsibilities are divided in sprint zero. The minimal requirements which are supposed to be completed uh, to start uh, to, to start a particular sprint. That minimal requirement is not required. Okay. So, do you think development team would be able to start development in Sprint Zero? It depends upon the functionality. Now, if for a logging system, uh, if it is a logging system, yes, uh, by considering the Sprint Zero documentation, they can start the development. Uh, suppose it, it, there is a there is a Sprint where you need use cases, uh, use case diagram, then the UML modeling uh, documentation to refer to, and then start the uh, then start the uh, development. Then in that scenario, Sprint Zero is not the only document that where you can uh, refer to. So it depends upon the functionality what we are doing. Okay. Uh, don't you think before starting with development, the infrastructure needs to be set up for the development team, and it should take minimum yeah, one yeah. to two weeks? Yeah, yeah, it should. So that is something would go in Sprint Zero. The rest all would okay. start from Sprint One. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. Next would be. Uh, five types of requirement category. Yeah, uh, functional requirement, non-functional requirement, uh, then the business requirement, the UI requirement, okay. testing requirement, market requirement. Okay. Explain them. What it is. Oh, okay. Business requirements are the requirements <coughs> which which are uh, basically uh, the main goal of the business. What the product wants from the project. Uh, so they are uh, basically what are the business requirements 
so with what we have to acquire from the business then market requirements are what are what all what all are the market needs what what the people require from the project or what the client require and what is the uh, scenario uh, in the market that are the market requirements uh, functional requirements are basically all the uh, technical requirements the uh, functional dependencies uh, whatever the project needs uh, ui requirement is how the system look, should look like uh, from the user's perspective uh, is the is basically the user requirement uh, the ui requirement Thanks, Shivani. Now, who wants to come next? Can I go next? Please? Yeah, please. So the first question remains same to you. The retrospectives, uh, the three ret retrospectives, uh, then after that, the sprint backlog, the sprint, uh, the product backlog. No, only first four are correct. Uh, sprint backlog and product backlog are not set. Okay, so what is their sequence? What come first? What come next? Okay. So what happens in sprint review? Covered or what has been developed? It's a demo. Yes. And how you have used it in your project 
any real time example Okay. What's the difference between drop command and delete command? Uh, drop command deletes the uh, objects from the database and the delete command just uh, deletes records from that particular Okay, and what are the typical scenarios wherein you would be using data visualization?
So those are essentially requirement properties. It is referred for the requirement and uh, the requirement is the specific and uh, acceptable in the real time. Okay. Can you expand smart? What is S? What is M? What is A? What is R? What is T? Okay. Uh, the S is the specific. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. should be like uh, uh, whatever the features should be in, in any project in a more uh, professional setup like uh, if like let's say in a mobile application so so the feature uh, would be like it should be uh, it should be it should work for an ios as well as an android application both and uh, the capability is uh, uh, the task for that particular application that what what is the application capable of? So, what is whose subset? Is feature subset of capabilities or capabilities is a subset of features? Uh, I guess the features are the subset of the capabilities. Capabilities is like of the particular the main task of the application. So, uh, so features uh, would be the So, Harleen, would you like to go next? Yes, yeah, sure, sir. Sure. Okay. So, the first question remains the same for you. Yeah. I have uh, around eight years of experience in um, the, all the phases of development cycle uh, with the development of analysis, design, and testing and deployment. Um, my current project. Uh, with the Merge to Pharmaceuticals, uh, which is about the Ready, ready Smart, which is uh, like an injection which they invented to put and send the data to the secure server. That is uh, basically about the collecting data about patients and uh, injecting to the 
my role in the project was uh, about uh, business analysis of by working with end users and other stakeholders to identify the harms uh, and the proposal. Um, we conducted the I conducted uh, my team. We conducted that challenging details. And uh, uh, I was on all the projects and the responsibility of the business analyst. The UIC is only a decent place with that. And perform uh, um, data mapping and uh, SQL queries to filter the data out uh, for the uh, reporting requirements. And we also maintain uh, RTM that is the common security matrix and test matrix uh, with the test results. The, all the use cases um, and we attended the daily weekly status meetings and uh, i used uh, jira uh, jira as for the for uh, defect and issue tracking mm -hmm. and obviously use the excel for my other documents for, and the word for the for the other documents okay Fair Velocity is like a time of uh, um, amount of work which we have, like uh, how many um, functionality we have to develop, mm -hmm. and uh, we calculate it according to the time and hours, like how many um, people are there to work and how many hours we have. So according to that, we calculate. Okay. Retiring a requirement is like uh, basically it's about the uh, deleting the requirement from the uh, log as we don't need it or uh, um, or like its uh, functionality is changed and we no, we don't need it so no longer so that's um, so that's how we retire a requirement okay any specific example. For example, um, uh, for example, um, like in a payment uh, module, we uh, we don't uh, we are not accepting a particular type of credit card. Like we are not accepting uh, American Express. Uh, for example, no, no longer in the project. Then that we will um, delete from the requirement log that accepting uh, American Express card. Transitional requirement is basically um like from one state to another to transition the project from one state to another. Like the, for the, we can say we want to test it on the different, uh, um, different uh, web browsers like IE or Firefox. We want to, um, in some in some cases, like some requirements don't work perfectly on the IE or some don't work on the IE or on the Firefox. So in that case, so. Okay. So, are these requirements permanent in nature? No. I guess no. Yes. It is temporary in nature. They yeah. are there in project for a period of time. After that, they are no longer needed. Later on, they are retired.
I think no, but we can uh, surely can um, uh, move those uh, undelivered uh, tasks to the another sprint. But if your business stakeholder argues that he needs whatever is decided in the sprint, so what you would do? Then yeah, if uh, the project, if the uh, if the situation comes that like, and for example, like uh, project is like uh, not completing on the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or we have like a big, big, big backlog. Then if stakeholder uh, argues and uh, get approved for the another time, then we can just get. Okay. Don't you think we have the option to change the capacity of this print? We can include resources. So that is the um, approach. You have to change the capacity of this. Okay. Basically, it's um back tracing and forward. Um, tracing is basically to link between the uh, requirements and the elements, right? So, in uh, backward and forward tracing, means uh, like which um to to link the requirements with the which we have already developed or we have to develop in the forward tracing. Does that mean? So essentially what happens is like whenever we are asked to trace back a requirement to its source, like how the requirement originated. So the approach is always mm -hmm. back tracing the requirement. We go back to the requirement repository and check what is the based version of that requirement and after the baselining of the requirement, how many subsequent versions has been created for that requirement. So that process is back tracing. Now forward tracing is like your system is having a current functionality and the user is asking a particular change so you do a impact analysis around what all requirements it would be impacting if this change is uh, accepted in the system so you are essentially forward tracing the requirement through impact analysis okay Okay, so it was about the um, injecting the data. Uh, so functional requirement was basically uh, about the um, designing the classes to insert the data from one place to another. So you want me to explain how, like the approach or uh, approach and what were the contents within it? Okay. Um, approach was agile, um, basic, um, obviously, and the um, content was about the how, um, how many classes were there uh, we have to include, and the, their relationship with the, each other, and uh, the objects um, of uh, every class, and uh, their uh, accessibility in the class and to the other classes. So kind of. Um, that and um, like patient data was there, one was there, like patient data um, about the basic information about the um, patient and then what the uh, disease he has and uh, what are the medicine he was given and uh, the what are the side effects if he, if he got any. So all, the, all, uh, all these four uh, different um, things were, um, were made out of different classes and objects. And those objects were referred to the physical um, provider, like uh, healthcare professional, like who was attending that uh, that uh, patient, and what he um, prescribed and which pharmacy it went. 
so it was all all related and uh, about the relationship of the all these uh, objects to change management is the um, managing the change of uh, the requirement um, like it goes through uh, it goes through the um, access for the change and then prepare and plan and then implement phase of the of that change okay so after you have done the impact analysis after assessing the requirement shouldn't it be approved or denied Shouldn't it go through approval process before implementing it? Before that, that uh, Reactive elaboration of um, technique uh, for managing the project um, that is for particularly um, it, as the project uh, continuously modified or uh, detailed or even implemented as it goes um, as well as the, the details come, then the set of information becomes it goes through the uh, as the pro project goes through then the as the project progresses as the uh, technique is called okay so essentially uh how often does it happen in your particular project like once it starts right and then uh, if any change comes in Okay, so essentially in agile projects, there is always a scope of progressive elaboration since the requirements are not that much clear up front. Register is just um, to 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 like a, a repository of the all the risks uh, identified in the project, mm -hmm. like nature of the risk or the who who we have to reference and who is the owner, like who will take the responsibility of that risk. Or sometimes, uh, for example, uh, like if we think, uh, if we are implementing only a, a payment system and uh, we didn't include all the cards uh, which are um, Mm, which are allowed in the system, and uh, then uh, the user, uh, then it will be a reduced functionality for the user that we can't use all the, uh, all the cards kind of that. So it's like the responsibility will be on, on the product. So, um, okay. so we have in risk register. We just log all the risks and questions. Okay, fair enough. Now we're expecting. Okay, thanks, Helen. Uh, Shashanka, can we start with you? Uh, yes, yes, Kani. Sure. Okay, the first question remains the same. Uh, so I have been working as a business analyst for the past five years now and uh, I have been involved with end-to-end -end development of a product and um, I'm well versed with all the phases of uh, the software development life cycle. I've worked with uh, met methodologies like agile and waterfall and also hybrid methodology and I have uh, experience 
producing all the necessary project deliverable um and to tell something about my project i was uh, working with hartford insurance recently uh, so the my main task in that project was to improve the customer service and quality and to act as a communication bridge between my business and technical team uh, i was there from the planning phase itself in the, for this project uh, so i am uh, so i was Uh, responsible for uh, requirement elicitation gathering uh, conducting chat sessions uh, interacting with my stakeholders to uh, gather requirements and then document them to uh, get a sign off later on uh, it was an agile project so uh, we worked in sprints so i was a part of all the sprint ceremonies uh, i helped the product owners to facilitate the product backlog and to review the test cases for the testing okay. uh, for the testing team okay fair uh, uh what's the business problem you solved via this project from a functional uh, perspective so uh, actually this project was focused on a uh, workers compensation uh, like we wanted to improve the claim processing system of the uh, of the of the company mm-hmm. so it uh, like the entire process when you get a claim uh then uh analyzing and investigating it for the but for the workers compensation claim okay so uh reverse engineering is like uh when we get a product in the market so if if for example my company is interested in that product so we will maybe buy that product and start analyzing that product from the end towards the start so it is like so it is like i want to, uh, i have a application developed application and i start uh, looking at all the features and what all uh, that software is needed uh, to in order to be implemented Refa- uh, refactoring is a bit different because it is like restructuring an existing application uh, like we can change or modify some part of the some some requirement uh, some part of the code that way okay. so it is at the code level refactoring so it's like okay. improving the coding standards of a particular system based on the current uh, benchmark requirement oh okay okay um so as a ba uh, i think my role would be like i would work from the end to end development of all, the entire project whereas the quality assurance team uh, they they would be part of some of the aspects in the development of a project like while when it comes to the test scenarios and uh, like testing uh, that like writing test cases and all so when even as a ba i also can uh, help the qa team to write test cases and test the acceptance criteria so these are the similar aspects okay and what about the accountability part um so the uh, like the for the testing part the qa will be accountable whereas for the uh, like ba will be like as a ba i would be responsible for the requirement uh, gathering part like the writing the acceptance criteria that would be my accountability whereas making sure that the project uh, works according to that criteria is the responsibility okay
so personas are uh, i think we can say that they are substitutes for the real users mm -hmm. so whenever we have a system and we want to know uh, like what 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 would a user think of the system so we can use personas that that can be any person uh, it can even be a stakeholder so he can act as a user and tell us what improvements or what problems he faced or if he likes the system or not so uh, it can also be like we can also use the data that we collected from users when we did the requirement elicitation with um so i think the main difference is that uh, as a ba we don't handle physical uh, data modeling mm -hmm. uh, because i think we are responsible for conceptual and logical modeling uh, the conceptual modeling is like the it it represents the highest level of relationship between the entities uh, so the, it includes the entities and their relationships and uh, we don't mention anything about the uh, primary keys and all whereas uh, the in the physical model is like uh, it it represents how the model is built within the database and it shows tables and everything so it is a very deep detailed representation of the database okay um so i think that version control is uh, the control of deliverables whereas the configuration management is the entire process that needs to the uh, that leads to the project deliverables like version we have several versions of a particular software whereas uh, configuration management it involves several aspects such as change management project management etc which cannot be managed by us So version control is more at a software level and configuration management is more at a document level. So we have a document versioning as well in place whenever we are creating a PRT or FRT. So we have a specific section over there, document history. So that comprises of your configuration management. When it comes to version management or version control, whenever you are uploading the next next version of that particular piece of document, the SharePoint software itself creates a version for it 1.1, 1.2, 1.3. .1 so it is more at a system level. Okay. um i think 3ts are the main main tools that we use as a business analyst because to implement our task we need uh, tools such as jira sharepoint etc uh, even uh, uml uml technologies so that we can explain our uh, explain the requirements that we gathered we can document them and share them and uh, the task 
tasks are like the tasks that we have to perform, like eliciting, conducting interviews, focus group, brainstorming, and uh, techniques. Uh, I think we, I can say that we can use uh, like the Moscow prioritization technique, the SWOT analysis. These are the technique. It's like the process that we have to follow. So this, uh, the state chart diagrams, it represents the various uh, states in a particular uh, process. So it is like the system is in, uh, maybe for example, for ATM system, it is idle at the start. So when so once the user enters and enters its pin, so it is in active state. And uh, so like the process starts, he'll enter his pin, he'll, then the user will, uh, then the machine, uh, machine will validate it. So it will represent every state that the machine goes through. Mm. So, uh, if I'll split the user stories, like, so if there is any, uh, like the user stories are supposed to be concise and as small as possible. So, uh, while splitting the user stories, I'll make sure that, uh, like, I don't miss out any of the content, any of the user stories. And any of the requirements are not missed out when while splitting. And, uh, okay. So, what are the criteria, basis on which you split the user stories? I explained you ten criteria, eight to ten criteria. Uh, like uh, the effort required in uh, the effort required to implement that user story, the variations in the data, the Workflows and all. Yes, workflows, operations, users. So, depending on these criteria, you can split your user stories. RCA is root cause analysis. Uh, so root cause analysis is like uh, what factor caused a problem in the system, like what, what caused that particular issue. So uh, it is like it describes a wide variety of approaches that can be used to uncover that particular uh, that particular cause. Like we will uh, will investigate what caused that particular error. If it was a bug in the system, then we will uh, uh, we'll start with like maintaining the system and uh, uh, issue bug related problems or like what was the actual source that caused the problem. So like we can ask several questions like. 
yeah, the five I techniques and all to identify the root cause and uh, the root cause of the problem. Okay, fair enough. Thanks, Shashankar. Is everyone done? No, Manjot is left. Okay, Manjot is left. Okay, so Manjot, the first question remains the same. For my project, I have to start from the Okay. So let us go uh, scenario based mode. Let us cover some scenario based questions for uh, uh, this. If there's a change, so first of all, I'll look if there is any like what is is it really necessary for the change that has been made, <coughs> and can I accommodate that change in the ongoing experiment, or do I have to take up the next one? Uh, see the importance of that feature or. Then I see what documents I have to do. And also, how I have to change the work. 
first the main thing would be i'll just go the train in the so no the question is not that read the question carefully here the requirement is not changing here the way the requirements were written earlier that is changing the representation of the requirement not the requirement I would say if I'll try to make a unit, I'll just make one. Okay. Prototype thing. And prototype is just one. If there is a okay so don't you think that would add additional cost to the project because you have already exhausted two months of your bandwidth in writing these requirements now again uh, you are considering writing the requirements but you also have the requirement gathering work for the next phase of the project so would you be able to accommodate this change in representation of the requirement First thing, what I try, try to do is try to explain them one on one. But again, if they still don't get the environment, the way we have to do it, we try to fix up. Okay. So let me ask this question to everyone and have their viewpoint. What would be their thought process around it? Uh, personally, I guess um, we can make the user stories more uh, simple or we can like split them uh, according to the need, like according to the role or uh, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And the second thing we can change is obviously the uh, more detailed uh, UMLs mm -hmm. or the, yeah, according to the, uh, like whatever class or object is there, we can make more class diagrams more detailed class diagrams or uh, the connected uh, connectivity between all the classes and all. Okay. Any other opinion, suggestions, anyone? Okay. So see, if you read the question, the question is very subjective in nature and the circumstances and situation would be different for everyone in their particular project so essentially when we observe such situation wherein you spend two months of time gathering the requirement and uh, after obtaining the official approval from the business stakeholder you pass it on to the development team now for some reason the development team is unable to comprehend the set of requirements that you have produced to them so essentially what you would do as a business analyst is there is a lesson to learn over here so you have to essentially change the business analysis approach over here if you go by the definition of babok you have to change the business analysis approach now what uh, all comes under business analysis approach is like how you represent the requirement probably like uh, manjot already said you would uh, include more uml more use cases probably like uh, Harleen said that you would be writing more clear user stories, more splitted user stories which are more concise in nature, more uh, comprehensive in nature and to support them you would create the necessary supporting artifacts which are of uh, the use for the technical team's consideration. So essentially what the answer uh, that I was looking for here is if you go by the business analysis term you have to change the business analysis approach over here after you have learned the lesson.
because it, uh, see in real world project whenever you have already exhausted two months of time writing those requirement if someone asked to you to revisit those requirement and do the necessary changes you already have a handful of activities in your hands so you may not have that much time to spend on revisiting those requirements so probably what you would do you would explain those requirement to the development team uh, in a deeper context and from there onward you would learn a lesson and go about writing the requirement basis on the need of the audiences Okay. So how do you identify your team? Let's say, a con uh, let's consider a scenario, your team is geographically distributed. How would you identify your team? Okay. So while analyzing the document, shouldn't you be referring the stakeholders list and org chart for that matter? So that would be having all the information about the stakeholders who are there in the project. Okay.
also if in case there are additional consultations needed you could uh, uh, if say there are some meetings planned and you feel that your knowledge is not sufficient you always have the option of inviting a expert judge in your session who would essentially be a subject matter expert So let's say it's a miss from your side as a business analyst. What you would do? For some reason, you missed out capturing those requirements. What you would do? Okay, so see uh, if in a particular project uh, this cert, uh, circumstances happen, the business would always ask for a justification. So how would you justify your missing requirements? What would you consider in that justification? Because that's a miss from your side. You. <laughs> okay so let's say your business disapproves your justification in that case Don't you think uh, you should be creating a risk mitigation plan for it? So see, whenever the things are happening, maybe it's a miss from any stakeholder, whether it's a development team, whether it's a QA team, whether it's a BA team. There is always a document to rescue us, That's, that is risk mitigation plan. So if in case the business disapproves your justification, you can go on convincing them with the help of your risk mitigation plan. You have to convince them in such a way that if next time such situation happen, then this is our risk mitigation plan. Because risks are bound to happen in any project. 
there won't be any project in this entire universe wherein risk doesn't happen it happens but it has to be supported by a risk mitigation plan okay so even after conducting jad session they continue to do the same thing it's still happening this issue okay but do you think in a regular scenario wherein the ba ratio is like 1 ba is to 15 developers you would be having that much bandwidth to conduct frequent workshops so the ideal approach in this case would be back your requirements with necessary scenarios right as much scenarios as possible so let's say you are designing a functionality right as much scenarios as possible so that the development team and the quality assurance team are well understood in advance about the consequences of this functionality if this functionality is implemented in a particular system what are the typical scenarios that would happen so that would help them to code the system or test the system in and around those scenarios so scenarios are an ideal approach to deal with this particular circumstance uh, FAQ is one of the option but people do not have that much time to prepare an FAQ that is ideally con uh, I mean completed during the transition phase when you create the user manual but scenarios are something regular business discoveries that you um, include in and around a particular requirement for example if I consider a particular requirement like uh, I shouldn't uh, no uh, the requirement is like uh, if a, a valid license is entered then the policy holder should be able to issue a policy now in that valid license you have to mention the scenarios like the license would be of this many digits for this state the license would start from this particular thing which would help the development team to understand what's the pattern for that particular license for that particular state now if the validation fails what should happen in that particular system if the validation succeeds what should happen if there is a license which is outside of united states there would be a referral trigger to the underwriting team 
now once the referral goes to the underwriting team he has the option to approve the policy partially approve the policy or deny the policy now the underwriter also has the option to make necessary adjustment to the license and uh, issue the policy with an increased premium rate considering the fact that the license is coming somewhere from outside of united states so this way you can highlight as many scenarios as possible in and around your particular requirement considering the business context okay so let's say there are five stakeholders two of them vote for positive uh, positively for your requirement three of them are still not confident about your requirement what you would do in that case okay so you should go about uh, uh, perfectly said so you should go about the understanding of their reasoning so why they are not in favor of your requirement so once you understand the reason behind why they are not in favor of your particular requirement you could identify the commonalities around those uh, reasoning and establish a common understanding with, uh, with all the five stakeholders so you need to first understand why they are not in favor of that particular requirement if it is something that could be easily mitigated then you could understand the uh, i mean establish a common understanding with them right in that meeting itself
Make it as a least prioritized task or one that can that can get out But why would you take up? That is not your work. Saying uh, no to anyone is a different question. But at the first place, why would you take someone else's responsibility? Being a BA. Yeah. No, you cannot say it that bluntly as yeah. well. <laughs> <laughs> but you have to maintain that thin line because uh, see these are real time scenarios i have seen many project managers delegating their responsibilities uh, to the business analyst but there is a way to say no you can say no in a different way you could uh, like say that i am already occupied with so many things so i cannot handle this particular responsibility and uh, you can use your negotiation skills or rather i would say the soft skills that i have explained you in one of the session and uh, Try to convince them because they cannot force you something on which is not your responsibility. But you have the option not to accept it. If you go on accepting these things, then there would be a day when your days would start at 9 a.m. and it would end at 12 p.m. or 12 a.m. midnight. Okay. Again, I would be, I would ask them to refer those business articles that the head of one of the companies. Mm -hmm. When as and when when get when I get back, I would be able to give give them a clear that what you guys do, what projects are, how to go about it. And the first thing I'll ask them to is all the details, all the project information in post articles. Okay, and how you would assess them after, let's say, one week of time, or what should be the approach for assessing their knowledge? Again, I would conduct some kind of information that last just to know okay, what, where, what position are they right now, how much we need to do. Okay. Right from the start where I had to make sure the last the last two projects that really activity and project management is like 
there should not be any problem from right from the start when we have gathered one getting time and then i have to i have being a voice of customer like i have to speak to look at my right i have to make sure i should communicate all the requirements of the product i should document all those requirements clearly and make small short users to be getting that scrum plan sorry getting that sprint sprint planning meeting and uh, sprint review sprint retrospect and the ladies are conducting those meetings and finishing and finally uh, after those the, in the delivery phase of the project i make sure the walk through uh, should be conducted a walk through of any application should be conducted by me and my stakeholder are satisfied for what i like but these all things are at a project level here the question is how can you contribute to the overall organization's branding how these all things would contribute to the organization branding okay so have you heard of something called as white papers or research papers which every organization creates in and around an upcoming technology or new technology or in a particular domain so those all documents are created by your business analyst in that particular organization so they essentially showcase the organization capability to the outside world while making them stay competitive to their peers so you would be essentially creating white papers research papers you would be creating some uh, blogs for your organization so you need to be very good in terms of um, writing things on the emerging technology so let's say you are working in a banking domain so what's the next wave of um, uh, technology in banking domain what's the booming thing that is coming in banking technology sorry banking domain or bfsi domain so you would be writing various details in and around also you would be creating uh, sorry you would be collaborating and contributing to the domain competency group of your organization so that is also one of the responsibilities when you are working as a business analyst associated with any xyz organization okay so these were the questions that i had for you today